Are you ready? Because I'm excited for this topic. But first of all, introduction. Have you ever traveled out with food and you got stopped at the airport by customs? Did you know what to do in that situation? Let's find out. Hi everyone, it's your girl, the Sassy Engineer, and this is a highly requested topic. I posted a video on my channel about my travel prep for my trip to New Zealand from Nigeria, and I got a lot of questions. Did you carry palm oil? Was your package inspected? Did immigration check you? This video is for you and anyone who needs this information. At the end of this video, you should have a good knowledge of the kind of foods you can bring into New Zealand. Note that this list that you're going to see in this video and even the list on the website that I'm going to provide is not exhaustive. They only just talk about the categories of food that you can bring. The fact that you don't see the specific food that you're looking for on the list does not mean it's not allowed and also does not mean it is allowed some things you just have to try and see but in trying make sure you follow the guidelines if you have watched my video on five things you should know before coming to new zealand then you would know that new zealand does not joke with your biosecurity before i go into talking about the foods that you can bring and the foods that you cannot bring and all those food restrictions you have to note that the kind of food that you can bring into the country depends on not only the country's policies about this food but also the airline's policies about this food so that country may allow you carry the food but the airline may not allow you carry the food so when you are checking the country also check the airline's policy however most airlines don't necessarily have restrictions on food and if they do, it will be stated on their website. If you are confused, you can call the airline and ask. Please watch this video to the end before you ask your questions. And I'm going to need a laptop for this because I'll be reading them directly from the website. Now let's look at what Nigerian foods can you not bring to New Zealand? Pork products are not allowed into New Zealand at all. So the website says these products are not allowed to be brought into New Zealand. That is number one. It's written there in bold so that you not say you not see. Number two, beef, venison, rabbit, goat, all those products are not allowed to be brought into New Zealand if you are traveling from Nigeria. They can only be allowed if it meets a condition. And that condition is that it should be canned or retorted so if it is canned or retorted from any country and does not require refrigeration then you can bring it into the country but you can only bring 2 kg if it is not canned or retorted you cannot bring to new zealand what that means is that your kilishi cannot be brought into new zealand because kilishi is cured and nigeria is not a foot and mouth disease free country according to new zealand so we are not on that list. So that means kilishi, bush meat, all those dried meat products cannot be brought into New Zealand. But if your meat is canned or retorted and it does not require refrigeration, you can bring it into New Zealand, but it can only be two kg maximum. Fresh corn or loose corns are not allowed. It says here, it has to be freeze dried, great polenta, corn meal, corn flour, etc those are the ones that are allowed but do not bring corn product like loose popcorn fresh corn home cooked corn so if you want to bring corn you have to grind it and make sure that it is dry for your ghee those kind of things whole beans is not allowed i know <laughs> it's heartbreaking if you want to bring your beans into the country you know all those brown beans that you can use and do a wagon you have to split it so the website says beans and legumes are allowed if it is split flour or ground and does not contain bulk seeds soil disease and other plants or animal material do not bring whole seeds they will not allow it and we understand why because even in nigeria when you go to buy beans for instance you see that you have weevils in them you don't want to take that chances if you must bring beans either you grind it to flour 
or you split all of them open honey is not allowed at all so if you must bring honey it has to be honey that was made in new zealand it says here on the website honey is only allowed if it is if it was only made in new zealand it is commercially manufactured and packaged and in its original unopened packaging because honey is a high biosecurity risk to new zealand so so there's no re there's really no need of bringing honey because we have a lot of honey here so just come and buy honey here the last for this section is fresh fruits and vegetables these are not allowed in new zealand at all do not bring fresh fruits and vegetables you can bring dried fruits it says here on their website that fruits are allowed if it is fully dried freeze dried dehydrated juiced pureed pulped cooked roasted stewed and all those other processes that preserve these fruits and vegetables but do not bring fresh fruits and vegetables do not bring dried citrus products unless it is powdered that's some of the things you cannot bring to new zealand specifically for nigeria you cannot bring beans beans is not allowed whole beans is not allowed so remember that now let's go to the exciting part which is what can you bring into new zealand what are you allowed to bring into new zealand and i'll start with the very first the one that broke my heart the first time i came to new zealand fish so you can bring in aquatic animal products the thing says aquatic animal products are allowed if the species is identifiable and dead so it has to be dead and they don't have any packaging requirement but you may want to contact your airline and post company to determine if there are any special rules. How you can bring your fish, your dry fish, your nsari yak is debone it. What I do is that I break it open, I remove the bones because the bone doesn't really do much to the fish though. So I remove the bone between the fish and in the head, I remove the gills from the head I just make the fish open enough for them to see that there's nothing inside this fish and then i package them in transparent bags and label them so that they see this is fish what kind of fish is this so that they know that it's not a, a non-marine agilate or whatever that's how you package your fish so this is how my own fish looks like i separated the head from the body you can also bring in crayfish i usually grind my crayfish because i don't want to explain too much what other fish products do we have in nigeria stockfish you can bring stockfish the whole whole thing is package your stockfish properly in a transparent bag people the common transparent bag people use is ziploc bags because you know it has a lock so you can put in a ziploc bag and then label it always advise to use english name and the scientific name if you want to put your language, you can put the product in your language. For instance, Zaria, but also make sure that there's an English name, something they can reference if they are not sure, if they have not seen it before. Because this thing says aquatic animal product. It did not say a particular fish. It just said aquatic animal product. So there's a list here, but this is not all the list of all the aquatic animal products. Okay? So you have to also declare it and they will be inspected you can bring dried fruit and vegetable the limit here it says is 2 kg per product seeds are also allowed if they are for eating mpi website also has a list of seeds you can bring into the country 2 kg per product that's the maximum weight dairy products are allowed into new zealand now the website says that it is only allowed if it does not contain fresh fruit so like those are your yogurt that have fruit, they're not allowed. Ice cream that have fruit, they're not allowed. But if it is plain yogurt, plain ice cream, they are allowed. And the weight limits are also stated here. If the products are made in New Zealand, commercially manufactured, packaged, and in their original unopened packaging, 20 kg. If it is homemade ghee from Fiji, 20 kg. Otherwise, weight limit is 2 kg so you can bring yogurt you can bring ice cream you can bring liquid milk even but it should not be more than 2 kg okay i'm losing daylight let me turn on my lights important to nigerian foods are herbs and spices 
and this is what the MPI says about bringing herbs and spices to New Zealand. Herbs and spices are allowed if it is dried and ground, commercially manufactured and packaged. If it is on ground, it must also be in its original on open packaging. So you can bring in your herbs and spices. I brought pepe, I brought pepe so spice, I brought suya spice, I brought um what else did I bring? I even brought uyayak. If you know what uyayak means, this is uyayak in case you don't know. A friend of mine had brought uyaya the last time. You know how uyaya are whole seeds and they are quite big sometimes. My mom bought a lot and um, they are not cheap too, especially these days. So she brought it and they seized it from her because it was whole. Now, this time when I came, I chopped the uyaya to smaller pieces. That way, the bar security officers can see that CO, there's nothing inside. But in the other one, there's a high chance that some an insect can go inside, which to me is actually slim with uyayak because insects don't actually invade uyayak, but they don't know that one. If you're going to bring uyayak, chop it into like smaller pieces. They are very easy to chop. I also brought um, alligator pepe. So in that case, the last time it was whole that I brought it in, it was still in the casing. You know how they sell it in 20 bucks. So it was still whole with the whole season and everything. And they allowed it in. This time around, I ground my alligator pepe. There's some other spice that is called atta. Last time, I brought the whole one. This time around, I wanted to try to grind it. I ground it, though it wasn't successful. But you can still bring them whole like that. I think those are the common ones for us. Um, pepe soup spices, you can bring the ground spice itself. If you want to bring the whole spice, you can bring the whole spice. Some of them, using your discretion, if you're a bar security officer, ask yourself, if I see this spice now, would I suspect that an insect inside? Hey, you can also bring a hoodoo. A hoodoo, that is that thing that you use to put in um, nkwabi to thicken the, sorry, to add flavor to nkwabi. You can bring a hoodoo too. I brought the whole seed. The English name is called African nutmeg or calabash nutmeg. It looks like beans, so be prepared to be asked, is this beans? It is not beans. It is calabash nutmeg and they will allow it. But if you don't want problem, you can grind it. Gary is also allowed into the country. So package everything properly. That's the goal. Stock cubes are allowed into the country. So all your Maggi cube, your no, all your stock cubes are allowed into the country. They said it has to be commercially manufactured and packaged, which is generally like that in Nigeria. And it's in its original on open packaging, does not require refrigeration, does not require further cooking before consumption, but may require rehydration or reheating. Do not bring pork stock. They will not allow that one. And products from Indonesia are not allowed. So when you buy your Maggi, don't open it. Let it be like that in the packaging. Even if you open it, put it in a Ziploc bag, it's, the stock itself is in another original packaging because you know they have the small ones inside the big ones. Don't unwrap your stock cubes and bring it, let it be in its original packaging. Weight limit is 1 kg. You can also bring your other spices like jollof rice spices that they always sell in that bulk thing. It's allowed. Ogi is also allowed. MPI website also says that oils are allowed. So if you go there, you'll see olive oil, avocado oil, but they're allowed into the country only if they are commercially manufactured and packaged and sourced from plants. So these oils should be plant oil. So like your palm oil is plant oil. Adam Mansang is plant oil. You can bring them, it's two kg per product. So you are allowed to carry palm oil. However, some airlines may not allow you to carry palm oil and the thing is that you may run into issues with um customs at the airport but palm oil is actually allowed if your airline allows you to carry palm oil new zealand allows you to carry palm oil so note that all commercially manufactured and packaged cereal so like kellogg's and all those things rice millet with no seeds you can bring your millet for house people oats are allowed wheat is also allowed the last one on the list is alcohol you can bring in alcohol but they're only allowed if they don't contain box reptiles seeds soil disease plants or other animal material and you have to check your duty-free limit as well the limit for alcohol is 4.5 liters of wine or beer or three bottles of spirits or liquor and each bottle should hold a maximum of 1.125 liters. For instance, Kai Kai. 
<laughs> you can bring it Siemens you can bring it but three bottles only or any other container share three and each bottle should only hold 1.125 liters however if you are bringing in alcohol you should be 17 years or older if you are under that age first of all what are you doing with alcohol you will not be allowed so tobacco alcohol you have to be 18 above before you can carry them so that is my very extensive and detailed um discussion about the kind of foods that you are allowed to bring to new zealand and the kind of foods that you're not allowed to bring to new zealand i'm really specifically targeting nigerians but this also applies to anyone from any country so far as you are coming to new zealand even new zealand citizens are always subjected to these checks too so how much more you who is not a citizen so the link to the website will be in the description box Go there and check if you have any questions you can let me know in the comment section or you send me directly on my facebook page all right i hope this helps you and answers all your burning questions because i've seen so many of these questions on my channel asking me about what kind of food they can bring to new zealand i hope i've answered all your questions if you have more please feel free to ask in the comment section let's have a discussion all right take care and i will see you in the next one bye now